Hey guys, welcome back to the second episode of the Mr. Robot CTF. Now, uh, I'm actually recording this directly after that video. You can actually see it uh, within the timestamp. Um, so uh, I'm just continuing and we were actually working with Metasploitable, uh, with Metasploit, sorry. And for some reason, I couldn't get uh, the reverse handler to open and, uh, you know, to give me a reverse shell. So as I said, we're going to be using a PHP reverse shell that I downloaded off uh, Pentest Monkey. And that's because I don't want to code mine right now. And that's, well, it's mostly a waste of time. So uh, I edited the reversed, uh, the reverse shell uh, in the previous video. And I just added my IP, which is, you can just launch, uh, you can just check it out by typing in ifconfig. Let me just confirm that before we get started. Uh, as you can see, yeah, 192.168.1.109. So make sure to save this. And now my thing is, how are we going to upload this? Because uh, what I'm thinking of is we don't need to upload it. What I'm thinking is we can just, let me, we can copy the entire piece of code and we include it in a PHP file that already exists. So then we can easily open the reverse handler with a, with a tool like curl or netcat. So we'll start listing on the port one, uh, one, two, three, four. You can change that to whatever you like. Um, so I know that the WordPress is logged in and we can access it now. As you can see, I just refreshed. And uh, again, I hope it doesn't give me that problem. This is the Pentest Monkey site. As you can see, that's where I got the reverse shell from. And yeah, it's working. So let's look at some of the PHP files that I can edit here. Now, I was thinking that uh, one of the best ones ways of going is well, we'll have to edit one of the PHP files. And as you can see, we have the archive.php file. And that means we have to actually access the PHP file. So we'll probably, I, I, I'm going to go for the 404.php file over here. Okay. Now, again, you might be a little bit confused. Uh, what the, the 404 means is the page that will be displayed when there's no meaning it that does not have any content. So we can replace our PHP code. So when that someone goes to that URL, it is processed. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to paste the code I copied there. Remember it's PHP code, uh, which is very important because it must be processed by a server. So I'm going to update the file now. And remember, it's going to be uh, as the 404.php uh, file. Okay, so I've updated it now. We need to use netcat to start listening on the port one, two, three, four. And I'm starting, is it netcat LC? Listen, listen port. Oh, it's LCP or LV. Oh, no, let me, let me actually just check. Uh, netcat, uh, let's actually type in net. Oops. Sorry about that. And netcat, uh, yeah, it's prompting me to use inclusion. I know that uh, I don't need this right now. I'm trying to remember. So let's try and use netcat. Um, netcat listen, uh, let's just try LVP one, two, three, four. If I remember, I also covered a video on netcat. I'm going to, it's going to listen. Oh yes. It's listening on port one, two, three, four. Excellent. Now we need to use curl to actually start the reverse shell, meaning to process the page. So we can actually open up a new terminal here. Uh, let's launch that and we can say curl. Let me open that. Let me spread that up. So you guys understand what's going on here. So curl. I'm also going to make a video on all of these tools that I've covered. This is a great way of understanding the, some of the most important tools. So the URL is HTTP. Remember, there's no, uh, there's no secure, uh, there's no SSL. So HTTP 192.168.1.108. That's the IP. And then remember, it's the 404.php file. Hopefully, if that PHP was successfully saved and updated to the server, that should start the reverse shell and we should, we should get a connection right here. Uh, giving us the reverse shell connection. So I'm going to hit enter here and let's hopefully, yes, yes. Oh my God. Thank God that worked, man. This was getting so annoying, man. Oh yes. So it looked like the reverse, uh, it looked like it worked, but this is not a terminal. Uh, if I just check how we are logged in here, sorry, ID, you can see that, uh, yeah, we're using daemon. So I, I'm, I think we should spawn a terminal or TT, TTY. Uh, how do we do that? Um, I know there's the Python method of importing. Uh, man, how was this done? I'm sorry. I'm getting a little bit, little bit irritated. Was it bin, uh, bin shell I? Is it bin, bin shell I? Can't access, uh, TTY job control turned off. Hmm. Now that's getting really annoying. 
All right, so I'm supposed to try host name. We know who I am. We are, I am the demon right now. So that means I'm not logged in into any user, any user, and that's probably why uh, I'm not going to be able to read any of the files and even find the third key. So, uh, was it Python? Python uh, C to import. Then we use the single quotation import Pty. Pty, uh, then we use Pty again because we're importing the spawn. We're then going to spawn. Yes, we need to use Python to spawn this. As I suspected and as I feared, dot spawn. This is actually a very common thing if you're a systems administrator. Spawn, and then we use the bin dot s uh, bin sh uh, dot shell. Uh, not 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 dot shell, but the shell uh, bin shell, and then close that, and then we close that quotation mark. And uh, whoops, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. We have to. Uh, we have to actually do that again. Python, uh, C, and then import again. Single quotation import, and then Pty, Pty uh, permission. There we are. Pty permission, and then Pty dot spawn, Pty dot spawn, and then uh, bin shell, and then we close that up uh, like show, like so. Sorry about that. And then we close and then we close that and please give me yes all right so now if we list the files and we see our id uh we're still using demon that's really weird man oh my god all right so what i i'm pretty sure now if we just look at the users we can access here because we can access the entire server uh so we have actually exploited the server which is great but we've still not found the second key there's still two more left which is really bothering me Let's look inside the home folder. Now, let's see which users we have uh, inside. Yeah, we have robot. So let's go into that robot list files in. The, oh, we got the we got the key. All right. So let me just print that out. Key two. Whoops. Oh my my. Oh my oh my. Do I even have permissions to access this file? Because there is a password dot raw here. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Dot txt. Oh yeah. We need to perform privilege escalation. We are still uh, in, we need to actually log into root to view this. But there's a password here. There's a password.md5. Oh my God, I think we have to crack that hash, the md5 hash. So let's cat password, password.raw, dot raw, uh, md5, 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 md5. Yes, yes, we got, we got the hash. Uh, we need to use hash cat now. Oh my God, man. I think we have to use hashcat. Oh, oh, I have an, I have an excellent idea. I have an excellent idea. We can use, we can use crackstation.net. Man, this is a video I should have also covered. Crackstation.net. This is the old school days. Crackstation allows you to crack your MD5 hashes as long as they don't pass a certain threshold. Let me just go back to the dashboard. So we know that the, the PHP file is working. Let me just copy this. Uh, copy the MD5 hash. I hope it cracks it. Otherwise, we'll have to use hashcat. So yes, as you can see, non salted hash uh, hashes per one line. Paste that. I don't know whether you can actually see the hash. I'm going to enter the capture here. I'm not a robot. And I'm going to hit crack hashes. Please give me the hash. Please give me the hash, man. All right. Yes, we got the hash. The hash is A, B, C, D. Oh, my God. All right. So that's, so that's actually kind of funny. A, B, C, D is actually essentially the alphabet from A to Z, which is... Uh, it's, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm actually happy about that because they've actually got, they've got us through this. So, uh, let's see if we can log in now. So I'm going to try and log in, uh, to robot, to the robot account because we need to go into robot, then into root. Because to access this, to access the, the second key, we need permissions. So super user, robot to change user. And is it going to prompt us for password? Please do yes. So now let's paste in the password that we got or the cracked password MD5 hash. A, B, C, D. Tell me we have got it. Let's check our ID. Yes, we are finally logged into root. All right, all right, all right. This is getting fun now. Now stuff is getting exciting. I should have actually just skipped the Metasploit me method because I would have accessed this really, really quickly. Okay, so now we need to actually get into root using privilege escalation. And uh, before we do that, let me just uh, list the files in here and let me print out the second key so that you guys actually know that I accessed it. Key two of three, and you can pause the video here just to make sure that I got it dot txt and I'm gonna hit enter and there's the second key. So I'm also going to copy it here just to make sure that 
I'm not caught um, not caught offside really that's uh, so this is the second key we already have the first key saved on the desktop so that's no worry now we need to perform privilege escalation uh, to get the third key because I don't know where the third key is uh, and it's probably in the root because if I go back here oops if I go back here you can see that we don't have let me just go back and uh, see whoops uh, let, let me see what's in the root folder cd root uh, oh yeah I do not have permission yes we need to perform permission um, privilege escalation sorry about that guys I'm really really sleepy I haven't slept in uh, probably about 20 hours now so uh, how do we get into this now we probably have to search for a uh, files that can be accessed files that can be accessed or a program or a script they must have put a script here something that can be accessed that we can then use um we can then use interactive mode so a, a program like for example the way we had metasploit metasploit can be launched in uh metasploit or hydra or wordpress can one of these ones should be the one that they've accessed but that means we have to find uh we have to find a file that has the super user the super user ids um how do you do that now Ah, uh, I find, was it find and then we have to find the find permanent, uh, was it 2000? Yeah, it was 2000 probably, 2000 and uh, we then use the dev, uh, dev and null. Yeah, that should be the way it, it's, it, we should be actually get null is a directory. Yeah, so we could not find anything in there. Is that, is that supposed to be a space? Sorry about that, guys. I'm actually just used to used to using the terminal. Um, let me just copy that again and let me see if I made any syntax error. I should be able to get it, man. Or is it 4000? Let me, let me try that again because the user ID, the super user ID is, remember, they were looking for interactive. Pro now, we, WordPress can, should exist here, but Again, it's running Ubuntu, so that means they'll not have WordPress scan. All right, so there's something going on here now. Uh, it's probably three thousand or four thousand because I'm I'm actually I've actually forgotten this stuff. That's quite embarrassing, man. So, perm. Uh, let's try four thousand first. All right, four thousand and two. All right, just to make sure that it goes through the user the user permissions, and we select dev, uh, which is. Uh, the folder and null okay and uh, we can hit enter all right yes yes so that worked so these are the files that are currently accessible in interactive mode and some of we are looking for a script that we can run because that's the only way we, we can get in so the user bin passwords let, let, let's actually explore that that's interesting that is very interesting so let's actually try and explore that that looks quite interesting to be honest i'm not gonna lie uh so it's still going through the files and it should actually give us the response here because now it's not given us the active response uh, i'm not sure now how to go back uh so it's still finding files so let that continue finding files uh we now need to to use one of these programs i'm going to try the password folder because they probably the passwords and then then we can log in directly into root or or it's going to be either sudo or nmap. How about we try nmap? But then the nmap, I think we can use interactive mode. But then can we launch? Can we launch the shell from there? And for some reason, this has died on me, man. How come we cannot x? We cannot. Uh, oops. If I x, oh boy, looks like we're gonna have to do that again. So I'm gonna listen back again here and curl back again there. Uh, hopefully we can get the connection. Have we got the reverse connection? Yes. All right. So am I still using daemon here? Sorry about that, guys. So now we know where the files are. Um, ID. So CD. Uh, we can just change because I have the password. So we have the cracked MD5. Or actually, did I have that uh, open? Yes. So it's ABCD. Let me just copy that again. Sorry about that, guys. For some reason, it failed on me. This is part of penetration testing. You know, it's just always going to be filled with errors. So what we want to do now is we want to use the su su super user. Whoops, sorry about that. Super user, and we want to log into Mr. Robot or Robot. Sorry, what what, what am I talking here? Uh, super user, so super user, 
robot and uh, uh, super user must be run from terminal. Oh yes, we need to import the Python here. Uh, so we need to import Python. Uh, let me remember, come on, come on, uh, import Python C, import permissions, P PTY, uh, so Python, sorry about this guys, Python C, import uh, PTY, and then we're importing PTY again, PTY dot, um, I believe there's a space there, PTY, PTY dot spawn, we're spawning PTY dot spawn. Uh, the shell so we're spawning the shell all right so bin um, bin and the shell so we close that up again and we close that and we close that oops my bad and we close that and we should get the shell now now we can actually log in super user to robot uh, robot quickly go through that and I'm going to paste in the hash here that we unhash uh, and then we now have uh, we can check our ID and we are back to where we left off we're trying to gain access to super user so I saw nmap there. Now nmap is essentially lies in the folder. Well, we can actually launch nmap and see what we have here. So can I try and launch nmap here? Yes, it does work. Excellent. So now let's try and launch nmap. Uh, does it, how do you launch? Ah, there it is, nmap interactive. Just what we wanted. All right, so nmap interactive. nmap interactive. Hopefully this allows us to launch the shell. All right, yes, yes, we can use nmap. Excellent, excellente. Now we need to launch the shell. Um, can we just launch it using uh, the bin shell or... Um, can we do sudo bash? No, we're not, we're not using um, TTY. So uh, we'll have to use the old school style shell. Yes, yes, yes. Are, are we in super user now? No, we're still, oh yeah, we are. We actually have the user ID. So I'm actually in robot, so we have to actually change. But that means we have permissions now. Um, so what we need to do now is we have permissions. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna list the files here. Uh, so we have to actually go back, list the files there. Um, and we have to go to root now. Can I actually access root? Yes, I can access root. All right, what files are there? First boot, and we have finally found it. The final key. Key three of three dot txt. I hope there isn't any encryption. Cat key three, uh, key three of three dot txt. And please be the key. Yes. Yes. We have finally got it. Oh my God. That took a lot of time. As, uh, well, I, I'm not going to say that was too bad, but I have to actually start practicing, man, because that took a lot of time. And we got all the keys, uh, all the flags really. Uh, in the previous video, we actually made some fundamental mistakes with Metasploit, but I didn't know that the exploit was deprecated and there was something wrong with the metaprinter. Uh, so let me just copy the first key here. Uh, so I do challenge you guys. Uh, I've shown you how to do it and you can try it out for yourself. You can, you know, do it the same way. I know I may have done mine a bit different, but that's how I think in terms of penetration testing, you know, privilege escalation, all that good stuff. I was actually really keen on using the Metasploit because that would have saved a lot of time and you know you don't have to use many tools but as I said this is a great place to learn your skills and as you can see we have gained access to the uh, to these to the virtual machine or the server depending on what you want to call it and there you are you know I've captured all the three keys and uh, I hope you enjoyed it I hope you found value in this video so that's going to be it for this uh, VM uh, this uh, capture the flag VM series in the next C uh, CTF series we're going to be looking at another one so leave your suggestions in the comment section and I'll be sure to check it out and uh, you know we can go ahead and learn like this so that's going to be it for this video guys if you have any questions or suggestions let me know in the comment section or on, on my social networks or you can post them on my website and i'll be seeing you in the next video peace